welcome uh, Addison. Yay! A new board member. Woo! Welcome, um, Addison. I think I think most of mo I think all of us know you, but I could be wrong. <laughs> uh, but if you don't, um, the way I know Addison is from. Um, you know, all sorts of things from writing books like the O'Reilly book to video training to helping with documentation to being um, a well known speaker at, at you know Drupal events to you know to many more things. So very excited to have you on board. And and so, sorry if I, I um sold you sh short there. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, no. But all around amazing person doing lots of different things in Drupal. Um, so excited to have you on the, on the board. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Welcome. So yes, here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we have a yeah. Well, well, welcome, Maddie. It's really good to have you. Thanks for having us back. I'm excited. <laughs> 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 That's right. It's not your first time at this rodeo, is it, Addison? Uh, well, I wasn't on the on the board when I was on the DA before. It's back when we had the whole permanent member thing that voted the board and all that stuff. But um, back in the old school system. But yeah, I think this is. I like this board. I'm digging this. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. You can stay. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> All right. Well, let, let's get going. Um, I think you all have access to the board packet, but um, we're going to do things a little bit differently this time. Um, we're not going to do the regular updates, committee updates. We, we've shared those in a document. We, we may do some Q&A around them, but we're not going to explain them in words, so to speak. And then we're going to spend a good chunk of time on the redesign of D2O. And hopefully that will also be a discussion, assuming you guys have all looked at the documents uh, in ahead of ahead of the meeting. But before we, we go there, we're going to do uh, some Q&A on the operational updates uh, by Holly. And then we're going to talk a little bit about the, the results of the uh, of the voting as well, <clears throat> and as well as the D8 Accelerate stuff. So Holly, you can get started. Sounds good. Thanks, Therese. So any, any questions from the um, committee updates before I launch in? Okay. Uh, yeah, so uh, lots of stuff going on over here. Uh, and I tried to lay it out in the update. It's sort of like highlights and like uh, shoulder shrug area and then some low, low lights. I'm really addicted to the shoulder shrug uh, iconography that's available via ASCII text. But uh, at any rate, um, the highlights for us, uh, trade Drupal and advertising programs in general um, are spinning up and, and really working well for us. It's a revenue area that's really um, very promising for the association to be able to, um, you know, do more things like the Accelerate and other ways to fund Drupal, uh, the Drupal community um, and the Drupal project. Uh, so those those are all looking really well, um, and those are new sources of revenue that are not con related, uh, and that helps us with our you know stability, financial stability. So those are looking great. Try Drupal just launched on the homepage changes that were put out yesterday. Yes. Feels like a lifetime ago, and um, so those are up, and we are getting lots of good feedback on those changes, uh, both in Josh's original announcement about, um, you know, recommendations for uh, changes to this first iteration of the homepage. Um, and so we are, you know, just currently figuring out what's going to go in iteration two and iteration three, including language around uh, Troy Drupal on the site. So that's what we're doing there. Um, comment attribution is all now, all, also now live on Drupal.org um, and being used. So almost uh, 6,000, it's probably more than 6,000 comments now because I wrote this last week, uh, have been given attribution since the feature launched about three weeks ago. David Hernandez, I just caught my own typo. You should be proud of me. <laughs> um, so, so that's going well. Um, and then the Drupal 8 Accelerate um, both the campaign and the work that it is funding are really gearing up at this point. So we just had uh, the week before last the Drupal CI sprint here in the Portland office uh, where folks were working on a new test bot 
uh, infrastructure for the project, um, and they got a um, metric lots ton boatload. boatload. Thank you, boatload of things done. <laughs> um, so you know, all the big key issues um, were addressed, which is great. And there's lots of work still to do, but you know, that's awesome. Um, and and we're just um, really excited about the work that it is, it's funding, so that's awesome. And the uh, fundraising campaign itself is also um, kind of a nice, good initial kickoff. Um, so thanks to all the board members for helping make that happen. And now we're just entering that, that phase where you just keep pushing uh, to get there. So that's good. And then obviously also elections, we had elections and we're just really thrilled that Addy's here, but we already covered that. So more thrilling Addy. Um, the things to watch for us, uh, DrupalCon revenue for LA, uh, we were a little bit behind uh, DrupalCon Austin, we think in ticket sales uh, coming out of the early bird period. Um, it looks like we are catching that back up to some degree, um, So, but we'll just keep watching. We have regular rate closing on Friday this week, um, but uh, we feel like whatever happens there, we'll be able to manage the budget implications for that event to offset. Um, so just an area that we keep pushing around. Um, and the team there is also trying to do some new things on Drupal.org to help get the con in front of new audiences. So they're looking at being able to publish DrupalCon Los Angeles ads uh, in front of folks who are um, you know, geo-targeted, basically, for the LA area so that we can really work on getting folks who don't have to travel um, to come to the con. Those kinds of things. And then uh, low lights, uh, partner programs, sales are really slow across all our partner programs. Um, you know, we, we have talked about on the board, uh, you know, as the association matures, um, its product lines grow and they deliver direct benefit that a sort of pure fundraising sell, like a supporter program is gonna have less and less meaning and value. We think that's true. Uh, we also just know that our sales draft has been really distracted at the beginning of the year with a, a couple of new campaign ideas that we tried that didn't pan out the way that we had hoped. Um, and the good news is that uh, this, the supporting partner met its March goal. Um, so we're not fall, falling further behind there. We feel like the sales team can redirect and, and start to um, you know, meet goals moving forward, if not make the revenue back up. So, uh, and then the sales team in general, uh, we had a team member retired, Don Page, who did so much for us. I just want to publicly acknowledge that he came in and was like, really helped us build a sales program, which was fantastic, um, and did a lot to set us up for success in some really key areas. Um, but uh, he just retired. I think his first trip after retiring involves a shark tank, like a, a real one, not the MSNBC one. Um, and, uh, and we're really sad to see him go. Um, and and we, just, we just had a, you know, another position that we just hired for not work out. So um, there's, you know, there's a lot of transition there and we've got lots of stuff to do um, on the revenue side, so that's a, that's a risk that we are really working hard to address and mitigate as quickly as possible. And that is my update. Are there any questions? I can see the chat, so I'm going to have to rely on you, Holly, or somebody on the webinar site, I guess. Doesn't sound like there's questions. I don't see any. All right. Awesome. All right. Well, let's move on to the um, the next topic, which is the uh, the release of the voting data. Thank you. I'm not sure who's going to present that actually. There we go. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Uh, yes. Audio output. Built in output. No, audio output, built in output. Ah, okay, sorry. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. We can. Okay, sorry about that. A little hardware issue. Uh, I've got the board topic. Apologies for that. So uh, 
So uh, as we mentioned in the uh, highlight section, we had an election and it went really well, which we have covered uh, in the board meeting, uh, uh, which we covered, sorry, as we uh, ratified Addison's uh, election, which is great. Uh, one of the things that came out of that was some requests from community members, both on Twitter and in um, some you know, emails to me, a um, couple of other places, uh, folks really pushing to see the elections data. Uh, so I just wanted to run through a couple things and have a discussion with this on this topic with the board. So quick overview. Again, we announced the winner on the 25th of March. We got a lot of feedback. Our discuss the discussion I remember of this in the past is that we've explicitly not shared the data to protect the standing of community members, right? Their, their, uh, their public perception. Um, and Folks have argued with me that democracies release vote totals. That's what they do. John Kerry got X percent of the vote, right? That's the kind of thing that we say. Um, and that transparency is one of our key community values. So to not release the data feels awkward. Um, and uh, I think to push back, you know, unlike a country, Drupal is a smallish community. And so we just don't want anyone to feel bad about where they ended up in the results because uh, they kind of have to live with that in a different way than, say, John Kerry does when he has a humiliating, <laughs> crushing loss. Uh, so I, you know, I'm, and I'm not really sure what the data is useful for beyond knowing, but I'm I'm cool with, with the fact that you know just knowing it is good stuff. So just a little, this is a little bit of the back and forth that we've had with community members. Um, and I want to be clear that we would never actually share data that could be tied to an individual. So um, we would never share that a specific person voted a specific way. So that is not what we do, but we could release aggregate results for voting. So this candidate got X number of votes in total, for example. Um, this is what the raw voting data looks like when we get it out of um, the tool that we use to analyze it. So um, we get a list of candidate names, uh, and then you can see their vote counts all lined up. Um, and what happens as you go through is that um, you know it eliminates candidates. Um, you know, based on their vote totals, you know, uh, in each round. So you get um, basically a row for each round and you can see who's eliminated as we go along. So this is what we get and we could share some version of this. So in summary, it doesn't align with our value of transparency, <laughs> but it might not align with the value of respecting one another. Um, and I just wanted to get this out in front of the board and, and just hear uh, where you guys are at. I don't think we would need to officially vote on anything, but if there's general agreement that we do want to release this data uh, in some way, um, then you know we're all for doing it. But I felt like it was worth a discussion before we just did it or didn't do it. Holly, how many people were asking for this? Um, Ten people or? Yeah, I mean, I would say that it is. Uh, it was you know, less than 100, more than 10, closer to 10. <laughs> and how many of those are actual candidates? Uh, I did do a survey of the candidates and asked uh, if they would be okay with the voting data being released. I got 10 responses and all 10 people said they would be all right with it. My question was, so that's good to know. My question was slightly different, I guess. It's like, how many of the people that requested the data to be released of the 10 bit, between 10 and 100? Uh, I guess how many probably are actual two. Candidates itself? Two, okay. Yeah, I think two people were really, were really um, very vocal about it. And by very vocal, you mean that they... You mean that they really want these two candidates really want the uh, the data released publicly? Correct. Or were they just asking for it for themselves? No, to be released publicly. Hmm. One uh, one the Twitter conversation about it. <laughs> one proposal we got from Catch was to release the results only for the top three vote getters so that we don't worry about making people feel bad at the bottom of the list, but there's some transparency about sort of where the momentum was for candidates. Hey, Holly. Mm -hmm. what, if you, what if you did the approach you had, which is the redacted, the list with, you know, the, the full transparency, but with the names redacted, and then told those people which column they were that was redacted? Did you guys follow that? I didn't quite follow that. 
t tell which, told which people. So in your in your uh, in, in your slide, you had a picture of the columns with the names redacted, right? So we could release it with with that with anonymous. Yes. Right. Um, but then you could tell those two or three individuals who felt strongly that they know. Um, you could say, "Hey, <laughs> your column four. Ah. Uh. Not not publicly, but to them individually. Hey, just in case you want to know where which of these is you, you're, that's you right there. Yeah. And then they could they could release that or not. Right, and they, if they wanted to go on Twitter and say, "See this? I'm column four. I mean, whatever." Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't. I don't think. Uh, I don't think that they really. That wasn't really their thing. Their thing was, the public should see these numbers generally, less so than I want to know what my vote result was. Yeah. Um, one thing that right, I felt right. one thing that I felt was an impetus, which um, David is reminding me of, is that some some candidates um, were wanted to know where they came in on the list because they, you know, if they were 12 out of 12, they would not consider running again. But if they were two out of 12, they would consider running again. Uh, just part of what I was like, I liked Catch's uh, proposal because I thought. You know, we can release all the raw numbers with redacted names, but then let the top few candidates know who they were, so that they could um, they could choose to release that or not. And they um, anyway, and they they would know if they were in the running again. So here's here's what I would do. If, um, I mean, I think we we sh we can look at at it in two. I think there's two parts to this. One, I think we can make a policy to release the data, for example. Uh, in the future, and make that part of the, you know, make that known to everybody when they submit their candidacy that their data will be, that the data will be shared publicly. At least then the candidates, they know what's going to happen with the data. Mm -hmm. I think we can, we could choose to to propose something like this and, um, and make, you know, formalize that in the future. Uh, and then there's a situation of, of what we want to do with the results of this particular Voting, I guess, which we can we can treat separately. Um, you know, my recommendation: if ten, I don't actually know how many candidates we had in total. Um, 20, Twenty-four. Ten, Twenty-four. Okay. I mean, we could reach out to them. We have already re reached out to ten of them. It sounds like, and ten of them are okay with it. I mean, I guess we could reach out to all of them and just get their um, their consent to release the data. I know it's a little bit of work. Yeah, I mean, the one thing I would say is that, you know, I think that makes a lot of sense in terms of, you know, setting it up for the future. Um, we obviously want to know whether that would deter people. We, you know, if it wasn't that long ago we actually had a hard time getting a lot of people to come in, and I, I want to make sure we don't lose people. Uh, some of these people would be good candidates to rerun. So I, I liked it as much as it's a pain talking to each of them just so we're not deterring anyone from doing it again in the future. Yeah, yeah, I could do that outreach now just to because it is it's it's only 24 people. It's not that difficult actually. So I could get permission this time around. Make sure that uh, you know outside of the 10 who already said they were fine with it, I could follow up with the other 14. Um, mm -hmm. And then in the future, as Bruce mentioned, it could be one of the questions that we ask on the nomination form: Are you okay with us releasing your position, um, you know, overall in the voting results? Um, and then we would know future. So um, my my feeling on this one is we should we should release the data. I know it's it's going to be uncomfortable for some, but I think it's one of the. I mean, I I did this right three years ago, um, and I just feel that the transparency is probably more important. You you put yourself up for a lot of risks when you run in. Um, and an election like this, and I, and I think if, you know, if I hadn't been successful and I, you know, got one vote, sure that would be a bummer and it would feel embarrassing. But you know, that's that's the kind of that's one of the risks you take when you do something like this. So that's my that's my feeling on this one. It's my red hat kind of thinking. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. So rather than asking people to opt in, you would just tell them by running, you are. <laughs> 
No, no, I, I think I think out of respect, it's great to ask them. Um, I, you know, it sort of a, you know, I think there's no harm in doing that. But my my feeling is that we should be releasing this data. Mm -hmm. I think we should release it, and I think that, um, but only after talking to folks, uh, the remaining yeah. folks, and making sure they're they're good with it this year. And then moving forward, we should make it really clear to anybody who does put their hat in the ring that the the data will be released. Yeah, I think within I, I the future, that. don't ask. Just state that this is part of part of our our process. Um, yep. Okay. And that's just an expectation. All right. Great. I, I recommend. I, I think that gives you all the guidance you need, Holly. Right? Yeah, definitely. All good. Right, so we're gonna get some data out there. That feels good. I agree. All right. So I, I suggest we keep moving. We're like we started five minutes late, and so I'm trying to keep us yeah. on track. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, and I'll just say to Michael, who's been sending some notes in the questions area, just to um, follow up with me via email, Michael, if you don't mind, but we'll, sounds like we're gonna get some stuff out there. Okay. So the next part is an update on Drupal 8 Accelerate, and we're gonna take 20 minutes, or up to 20 minutes. Did we get um, Angie on the call yet? No. Yes, yeah, she's on the call. You're in the you're a little uh, in the background, Angie. You're in a well. About that, is this better? <laughs> you are muffled me. Are you speaking through a teddy bear or something, Angie? <laughs> Webinar is going. Go to is going. Maybe I'll be there. Yeah, I'm still in it. Okay, hold on. Let me get rid of this fancy thing. What? <laughs> Is that better or no? Eh, I can hear you. I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's better. It's still a little soft, but I think we can all hear you. I give up. I'm having a really hard time with my life. Okay, so yes, Drupal 8 Accelerate. Um, so. <laughs> um, um, yes, sorry, okay. real, me, sorry, Andy. I, I know you just got started. I hate to interrupt, but um, uh, this was this was actually scheduled for the executive session. Is that no is that a mistake? Two parts. Or is that okay two to parts, talk about Jeff. now? Yeah, two parts, Jeff. Oh, okay. This is a sorry. not well, not, not raising the funds, funnel, but this is this is not raising gotcha. the funds. This is where how we're spending them. Yeah. So gotcha. basically, yeah. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yep. Um, so basically, you know, we've, we've done a lot with Triple Eight Accelerate so far in terms of the, you know, like bug bounties that we've done, $500 a piece to start, and then more if people are successful with, with their initial 500 and they come back for more. We've also done several sprints that have ended in huge success. We're in the midst of one right now here at Dev Days, where I am right now, um, doing performance analysis on Drupal 8 and trying to make sure we've got all the criticals identified and people are whipping away at, uh, at getting the performance issues we know about fixed. So this is really awesome stuff, and V8 Accelerate helped a lot with this. Um, but, you know, we were talking, I was talking with Dries and some other people, and, and kind of it seemed like in order to, um, in order to really accelerate Drupal 8, in order to make the most of people's, you know, very significant contributions, something that we need to do is, is kind of spend almost all the money that we can really before LA. Um, because if we spend it much after LA, we're no longer like accelerating. We're just, you know, we're kind of getting things, we're keeping things rolling along, but we really need like a huge push to like, spend as much money as possible as soon as possible. So something that we in the V8 Accelerate community wanted to propose was, was sort of two things. One was the ability to fund um, part-time work for one month periods with key contributors. And these would be key contributors who've already had success with the Drupal 8 Accelerate money. Um, so, for example, we have a couple of people, Daniel Weiner, uh, Andre Matisku, um, and a few uh, other people, Lee Rollins, this kind of thing, who have done great work on, you know, smaller D8 Accelerate grants. The idea would be rather than having them come to us for money every two weeks and us having to discuss it and approve it and, you know, whatever, that we would instead fund a larger chunk of their time to just focus on criticals um, with the oversight that someone on the D8 Accelerate community would meet with them weekly to bang out a list of issues for that week, 
find out where they're blocked on the issues you know, the, from the previous week and sort of make sure things are going along and, and sort of do the reporting aspect of V8 Accelerate on a weekly basis instead of having to do it all at the end. That's sort of one ask that we have of the board is to, to do this, you know, sort of formally. The executive board has already heard this proposal and, and given us a, a time to go ahead, but we felt like this was a big enough shift that is probably worth, um, you know, talking to people. So the, the proposal would specifically be up to 20 hours for a, uh, a week funding for a month, uh, renewable at the end of the month if things are going well, to key Drupal 8 contributors who've had success with Drupal 8 Accelerate in the past. And then the second thing that aspect of that is one of the key contributors that we would like to fund is um, a core committer who is actually on the D8 Accelerate Committee. Um, and it's a person who doesn't receive funding from their employer and all of his Drupal 8 time is donated out of his nights and weekends fund. Um, and so the, the ask from the board, we didn't feel appropriate that was cool for us to approve because, you know, he's on the you know, committee, and even if he recused himself, it just looks a little funny. So another request we had was the ability to um, get approval from the board to fund uh, catches time as well. So and those that, are sort of the two. That the two we, have, uh, we have separate discussion time set, set aside for that in um, exact right. session yeah. because it feels like personnel. So the, the one we're discussing for this period is, is just the general idea of that funding part-time work for key contributors who got a proven track record. It'd be larger buckets of money, um, so up to, uh, I'd have to do that, $24,000, I think, a pop. Um, but the idea would be that we would, um, you know, be giving more oversight to these than we do the normal D8 Accelerate uh, funds. And the idea would be that they can just stay focused for longer periods of time on, you know, killing criticals instead of having to constantly come begging for more money. Hey Angie, if I can summarize, I, I think what I'm hearing is that it would be the, the changes you're asking the board to, to give approval to are um, funding in larger chunks, funding potentially core maintainers as well as, who, who don't otherwise get any funding, um, the ability to, to fund a core maintainer. And I think there was also another piece that the funding um, might go to an employer rather than to an individual if necessary. Is that yes, right? Yes, that is, that is true. Um, to date, I don't think we need to do that, but it would be nice. So there's certain situations where I, I've done a lot of uh, conversating with various um, business people in, in these various events that I've been going to trying to figure out, you know, there's some people who we like basically would take as much time as of theirs as we can get because they're awesome and they know everything about the active issues we have on the go and stuff. But they're they're also employed by you know a you know a company and so in some cases it might make sense to contract directly with a company more so than the individual or at least loop in their employer that this is going on so that they can adjust um, their availability and or potentially augment their hours with additional company sponsored hours at the same time. Um, so yes, yeah, that is correct. Thank you. I feel very. 50-50 about and this. What 50 do you makes you uncomfortable, Donna? <laughs> <laughs> well, I I I think that um, it would be I think it would be great to uh, fund these people who really who know what they're doing and, and enable them to get on with it. I'm actually really kind of 100% on that bit. The bit where I'm uneasy is the sort of traditional. Um, reticence and and reluctance there's been to do for the Drupal for the Drupal Association to be involved in the funding of core work and I feel like we 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 would be consciously crossing that line and I want to do that with you know I want to I have some trepidation about that but on the other hand I think well if we if we've addressed all of the issues that and barriers to that already then let's just get on with it I guess that's where my discomfort is. Is it, is it time? In which case, let's do it. But I feel like we are crossing a threshold. Well, I, yeah, Don, I think I think we already crossed that threshold, right? I think we're the money's already going to that. It's just a question of can those funds be used in these slightly modified ways, right? Right. Gotcha. In which case, let's just get on with it. <laughs> right. And I think I think that the, what I'm hearing as as the impetus for this is that we would be more efficient with the funds, and um, yeah. so that we are increasing the the speed 
at which the funds can have an impact, right? So yep. there's a sense of urgency yep, here. that's correct. Where we do it's it in a, smaller chunks, the, the, the amount of money that, that the individuals receive is probably not going to be substantively different. Um, it's just that we're going to approve it in larger chunks, which means that the overhead that the, the committee has um, in overseeing their time uh, gets to be reduced because they, they aren't coming back and asking for money every week. They ask yep. for money a, you know, a month at a time, that kind of thing. And efficiency yeah, is... Definitely a plus plus. Definitely a plus plus. And I just yeah. want to provide transparency in terms of like the D8 Accelerate Committee. What we've set up is, you know, out of respect, we want to be very careful with the community's money. That for any proposal that comes either through us through the community grants or that one of us proposes as a you know, kind of a branch maintainer grant, we have a discussion about it. We sort of weigh pros and cons. We decide that, you know, who's the list of people. It's like, but basically, it's like a couple of hours of work to fund five hours of work, and it's not right. very efficient. <laughs> yeah, so so I would say, Angie, I th first of all, I'm, I'm a big fan of it because I think the reason that if you go back to sort of why we wanted to go big on a big fundraiser is exactly this, is that we, we're all keenly aware with the, of the sort of impact of switching costs and nickel and diming little, little grants to people versus getting blocks of time. And, the big problem in moving these things is people who know what they're doing with dedicated chunks of time that you can operate under more like a project and less like less like a, a moonlighting. And so I kind of feel like that is why we wanted a bigger pot of money so we could give you guys jurisdiction to do that. And I, I appreciate that you're bringing that to us because I think the transparency is good, particularly in the case where we have an individual who might have a conflict <coughs> of interest. So I think that's good. But I think overall, this to me feels very in keeping with accelerating, right? Like the whole idea of accelerate is not like, hey, let's get a little bit of money and throw it at little patches. It's, no, let's get some dudes who can really crank. And I think to me, this feels like progress, not, not a problem. Yeah, I think yeah, it's I just that, that we we publicly announced all the the guidelines that the, the funds would be given by. And so I think that, that because this is so to the to the to community, this is so recent that we announced it that we're already modifying it. I think that's why um, you know we brought it back to the board. Um, mm -hmm. Also, to to create a, a process by which if a member of the committee itself um, wants to apply for funding, to create a precedent that 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 gets um, that that gets escalated to the board and executive session to vote on, with um, so that the committee itself wouldn't be voting for money for itself. Yeah. So I, yeah, I totally agree. I, like I said, I, I really do appreciate that we bring it back here. I think it's I think it's smart and prudent, but um, but, but I'm a big fan. Um, hey, I did do, I did say one thing though. I forgot to say one thing. The the the, the funding company thing is it gets a little bit tricky. I, I want to be a little bit careful about that and do that on a. I do, would like to see those approved, and the reason is, um, there are companies out there as Dries has highlighted in the past who who have made large contributions to hiring core developers with that core intent in mind, and I'm concerned that those companies would feel uh, put off by the idea that we're, we're paying them to pay their people. Um, I would actually prefer, if possible, that it's more of a conversation with the company that says, hey, you know, can, can this person go, you know, can this person moonlight for, we're going to, we intend to fund them for this chunk of time. How can you work with us to help that rather than pass it through them? Because the perception that we'd be paying companies for their people, that could start to, I think that could start to backfire on us. So in other words, just to summarize that, um, you'd be comfortable with um, like someone from the D8 Accelerate Community having a conversation with, you know, if we wanted to fund contributor A and contributor A work for company B, you're comfortable with a V8 Accelerate member contacting whoever the project manager is or whatever at company B and saying, hey, you know, we, we really want to give contributor A money. Um, we know that they work for you. Like, can we work out a situation where we can fund them for up to a certain amount of time and that's a, in a way that's still respectful of the fact that you still have client stuff to do, <laughs> you know, and then... So you're comfortable with that, but not so much like we're going to actually subcontract company A for, for contributor. I lost track of my letters. But anyway, yeah. you don't want to see us subcontracting. You still want us to see us going to individuals, but you have no problem with having the conversation with their business people um, to make sure it's done in a respectful way. 
Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I I be definitely would be curious to hear what what sort of what Dries and Vesa and and Tiffany think from from their perspective. But you know, I I know this kind of stuff has gotten us in the past trouble in the past, like paying a Drupal shop to do something that other people think they're doing already or should just do. Um, just never looks good, and it never ends yeah. well. And I and I just would rather the person get paid who's doing the work directly, and not sort of like I know if you came to me and said, "Hey, I want to, I want to, um, I, I want, I need some of Jonathan Hedstrom's time to work on some issues, and we want to fund him," um, you know, we would rather give him some time off, and we wouldn't say, "All right, write a check to us, and then we'll pay him," you know? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. and I've gotten similar feedback from other company owners, and that's kind of why this is coming up. Because um, we don't want to undermine the business ecosystem, you know what I mean? Like we don't want people double dipping, and you know. But we've gotten feedback on two fronts. One is like I already paid this guy to work on core, right. Right. so why are you also? Paying? Is what we're doing, that, yeah. Yeah. Or B is um, I really wish you would have given me a heads up that you needed 15 hours a week from this person because they're in the middle of a client project, and you know I want to have a conversation with them to make sure that they understand that or what you know what I mean that kind of yes. Thing. Those are, I, I would say, those are the two issues that I would see. And then the third variant, which we're not seeing yet, but could, is, um, what if you're black mesh and you're like, great, so I pay Kathy full time because that was my contribution, and, and uh, now you're going to turn around and pay, uh, I don't know, um, Pantheon money so that one of their guys, can yeah, pay and then they're right. like, well, why did I do this then, right? <laughs> yeah. Kathy yeah. Curry would say that, black mesh would say that, and I don't want to get into that sort of, you yeah. know looking at a gift horse yeah. in the mouth kind of thing. Yeah, that's that's exactly where, I mean, we've talked about this in the past, but that's where it gets tricky because imagine two competitors. One is actively investing in Drupal, and the other is being paid <laughs> to invest in Drupal. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think okay. it, that, is a, that, is a, that is a problem, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think it's probably, it, 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 it is probably more perception than reality, but I agree with Therese. It just, it just looks... I think if we just pay the people individually, we ask the companies to be lenient on their time, and we understand that um, you know we're paying an individual, not a company. It's just cleaner. Uh, well heard. So we have about three minutes left um, in terms of time for this discussion. It seems. I could be wrong, and, and I could use a little bit of help here, but it, it looks like there's multiple com multiple changes that we would like to make. Would it be useful to? I assume we have to vote on those, correct? And and if so, would it be useful to maybe formulate these changes offline based on the discussion, and then vote in email? We can. I don't know if or we do we need have to a vote, vote ready. Because like, I don't have a vote ready because it was more. I guess it's up to you guys if you think we need to vote on it or not. My, mostly, my concern was kind of hearing your concern. Um, it's it's not it's, you know it doesn't make any charter changes. It doesn't do any you know it's not like we're asking can we use VA to accelerate money to also pay for vacations for core developers or something. Um, but I guess if you feel like it's a significant enough change to fund individuals for longer periods of time versus the initial little short stubby bug bounties that we originally talked about, then I think we should vote on it. But if you don't and what I'm hearing is plus one for longer contracts, keep it to individuals only, and it's fine to loop in companies to give them a heads up. And if that's the case and there's nobody opposed to that, then I'll just communicate that back to the V8 Accelerate people and we'll, we'll go with that. I don't think we need a vote. I think we're just talking about a time time, time shift in plus terms plus. of... Yeah. Um, and I think it's a good, uh, a good idea. Awesome. All right, let me, let me just... To a, like um, Strawman's poll, if that's okay. Is there anyone that is opposed to any of these th any of these things? All right. It looks like everybody seems to be in favor of not voting and the uh, recommended changes. Awesome. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it, guys. And ladies. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Folks. All right. I think we can move on to the next topic. Yeah, so and Angie, I just want to say thank you for spending thank you for spending our money wisely and doing something with it. That's awesome. <laughs> no problem. My pleasure. Thank you for working so hard on getting the money to spend wisely. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, yes, thank you. And uh, our next topic, I think, is a redesign discussion focused around the content strategy work. Um, and I think we asked the board to review all the materials in this uh, packet prior to getting here because uh, so we try to set them up to be pretty self discoverable. Um, and we we're going to focus on uh, questions that will help guide the implementation as we move forward. So we put some questions out there. They're big, long questions just to keep the discussion going. But the general gist of it, Josh, if I uh, am correct, is what of this resonates with you? What of this would you like to see shift? How do we, um, you know, what's the feedback that we can incorporate into the implementation here? Someone's got to go first, right? Okay, so I, 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 what, <laughs> this is Matthew. Um, it totally resonated to me moving things um, to a persona-based, based, based uh, um, kind of, kind of implementation as opposed to uh, content type-based um, implementation. I think things are terribly confusing and difficult at this point uh, for for uh, for folks to um, really, really get involved unless they're. Kind of, uh, kind of uh, deep in the in the uh, in the machinations of how how uh, D.O. Um, operates uh, at this juncture. I think it's hard to find things, and all of that all of that uh, um, resonated with me very nicely. I echo the concern that is in one of these packets uh, around around um, um, how the heck do we effectively manage. Um, uh, 10, 12,000 people who would be who would be uh, um, uh, potentially potentially um, adding and, and modifying uh, content. Although to a certain extent, we already kind of have that situation going on. It's just we're not act actually actively managing it as closely as maybe we ought to be. Um, is does does that does that sound right to everybody? to me you're either really struggling with something uh, or or something else but are you guys what is it if you are struggling with a response here what is the struggle that might be a good thing to talk about I don't I'm I'm silent because I don't think I'm really I'm across enough of it. there's a lot of detail and I don't think I'm across enough of it to, to say anything useful or have any questions of um, import In my case, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, oh, go, go ahead, ahead Jeff. Go ahead. Oh, all right, I, I, go I, was... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I looked at the materials as well and, and, and at the questions, and to me, they felt fairly tactical and like, I don't know, I don't know, do we use content types or blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, I, I felt it was, I don't know if, if it's useful for for us to I, I don't know. I didn't feel like big, big problems that we need to help with, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong. We being the board. Yes. Uh -huh. It if I, I would echo what Dries said. It felt like a lot of this was in the weeds, um, as opposed to as opposed to as opposed to uh, um, helping helping um, direct overall strategy around uh, around content. Um, it really, it really shouldn't be us talking about um, whether something is is uh, is uh, access controlled uh, via via uh, content types or uh, via roles or um, uh, those kinds of things. I don't think. Um, so I think that I think that's true. There's a lot of implementation detail in the presentations because it's tough to talk about some of these things and their implications without understanding what the implementation is going to look like. Um, I think the questions that we're trying to address are actually fairly strategic questions. So, um, you know, how do we? This is a this is a big shift, right? That we're going to make uh, introducing this content model. So. 
Um, what are some of the things you want to see us do to help the community embrace the new structure? Like, how can we set ourselves up for success so that the community um, can really can really take this on and run with it? Um, there's also questions of governance. I think those are really important for the board to address. So I think we're not looking for feedback around, like, do you think this is the right name for this content type? But we are really concerned about how we get it out in the community in the right way. Um, and, um, and, and, and how do we tie it into our uh, strategic framework, such as it is at the moment, um, so that we're, um, we're, we're doing this work in, in ways that show us we're helping to meet our mission. So I, I agree that these are strategic level questions. I just don't think they're board level strategy. I think that this is kind of what we set up the content working group to advise on. I think um, you know they, they they are important questions, and I think that that's that's as I understand the shift from tactical to strategic in terms of the working groups. These I think that that CWG could could really um, help flesh this out and and provide more guidance. And I think it's probably appropriate for the board too. Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to see some recommendations come back so we can talk about the, the specific recommendations. I guess one question is what is the what is the position of the content working group on this? Like are they on board with this or Yeah, I, I, I had a look at it and uh, for most of the details I don't mind all much because I also feel it's fairly tactical. The only question that actually came up to my mind is like it's a fine content strategy and loads of stuff being thought of, but that does this really address to the need of it being evolving all the time? I personally found that part a bit lacking because it's been fairly static because it's such a big piece of work and now are we like doing a one-off fix or is it going to be like an evolving thing that we can measure and keep on improving all the time? So I, I, I'm, I found myself, the reason I was quiet is I, I find myself a little bit uh, in, an, in a unique situation. Of, I'm not usually the client for this kind of thing. Um, and so I, I would agree with most people. It, 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 I know it, you have to get a little bit technical to, to explain things, but I, I did get the feeling that there was an awful lot here for me to wrap my brain around that didn't seem like maybe, maybe it was the right level of detail. Like, I think there would be a, another way to put something above this that said, hey, here's the things that we can promise if this is done properly, instead of, hey, you have to discern from all this data what, what would be different if we did this properly. And it, to me, to do this right would be print everything off and spend three hours really wrapping my head around the implications of the content type changes and those types of things. And that just, I don't know, I guess maybe it's not a level that Maybe it is appropriate for the board. It's just not something I thought I was committing to in reading yet, if that made sense. Um, I also, I still have one core problem too, which is it starts with a nice high level vision uh, for, for the audiences, but I brought this up in the last board meeting. I, I still, I'm still struggling with why some of our core audiences are missing and how could this be comprehensive if it only focuses on the people learning Drupal. Does that, sorry, does that make sense to anyone? Yes. And, and like right the pyramid, now... The pyramid is good, but that pyramid is basically, a, it's a way from becoming someone who's new to learning Drupal to someone who's a master of Drupal, but what about the people that want to use Drupal? Like they so this, this, is, this is where the strategy comes into play, right? So like part of, part of what I hear you guys asking for is, completely makes sense to me, but we haven't had a framework to get to give you that kind of strategic context because, you know, um, I think, I, I, you know, I feel like the first time we had a clear set of goals to start working with was in January, but it hasn't been a tool that we can use on a staff level yet. We're close. Uh, I also, because Dries got disconnected and hang on. You should now be able to unmute Greece. Sorry. Um, so, so that part is still that part is still tough, right? Because we haven't had a full framework to deliver this within the context. So, to Vase's point of being able to say, 
when we implement this, it's going to pull these levers that drive these objectives forward that tie to these goals that relate to the mission, right? Like we just haven't had that. So, so I get that that's, I get that's missing. I hear you guys asking for that. I totally, I totally sympathize with that. Um, I, part of what fits into that, Jeff, is this um, part of the overall strategy uh, for the part of the overall strategy for Drupal.org um, as a program has been this persona and this shift from one of the conversations we had coming out of persona work with Whitney Hess was this shift from learner to skilled and how if we really wanted to have an impact on the, um, if we really wanted to have an impact, that was the transition that we had to focus on. And it doesn't mean there isn't any other content available for those folks. But we do have to have a focus, and it's that shift that will create more Drupal developers that we need out in that community. It is that shift that will bring us more community members to do the community, you know, to, to participate in the community, which is something that, you know, we need to do. It is that shift that, um, you know, aligns with so many of the um, objectives that we've laid out in the last uh, bit of time with the leadership team that map to those goals that we discussed in January. So th that's where that right, part but, comes from. Right, but I think you know the, our goals are around around really three audiences. One is one is you know the, the people learning Drupal or, or using Drupal, the people that are we want to in the future adopt Drupal, and the community itself is working. And this content model, for me, addresses one of those, not three of them. Like I don't know, like where would for instance where would the whole association subsite fit? In this user group, Jeff, did you read the content strategy document as well? Because the content model is very about the content types, but um, the content model tries to take the personas and map them to the user cases, which include uh, user cases around information and marketing. Um, and those top level sections, I hope that they speak to it. If they don't, uh, we can definitely do some revision on that. But I would say of the two documents, that one is definitely more about the strategy where the model is more about the specifics of how do you achieve that strategy. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So I, I would and take a look at those those blocks on that, and if that, that doesn't begin to answer it, then that's what I need to know and be able to take back to the team because right. that's the part I would need to iterate on so that, um, so that you guys do have those answers. Yeah, and I have to say, Jeff, again, there were four goals that were set out. Develop sufficient professionals, lead the community, in focused and efficient, effective development of Drupal, ensure the sustainability of the project, right? The fourth goal is increased Drupal adoption, but that that learner to skilled transition is critical for those four th first three goals. Yep, no, no, I, by the way, this is not meant to mean that any of this is not, not uh, not good or not not directed at that. I just I'm I'm just struggling a bit with whether it's comprehensive. Um, that this that's been a concern I've had since since seeing the first one. But it's okay. I mean, you know, look the the uh, I haven't I haven't invested enough time to be honest with you. Well, I I totally hear the I totally hear the feedback that it's got to somehow be rolled up in a different way, and you know that's something to to work on. Well, I just I guess one thing, like one question I have is like, so will like will groups start Drupal.org be here is because it's user generated content. It's that's not there isn't really any content strategy around that, right? Uh, could you say that again uh, differently? So, so like the the whole sub like the subdomain of groups, right? Um, is that is that included in the content strategy? Um, yes, in this version. The first version that uh, we had shown earlier on and then based on feedback from the working groups and um, internal conversations about like how do we achieve the governance model that we need to make sure that everything can work, um, right. turned into a conversation where like, oh wow, we're going to put all the things on Drupal.org that you need to run groups. So the only two things that were going to be left on groups were user groups and uh, interest groups. And if that's the case, it's actually better for us to pull it onto Drupal.org because then we can include that content in people's profiles and um, that actually connect them to that part of their community contribution, which is something we can't currently do on Drupal.org. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Gotcha. All right. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll be the first to admit uh, I probably need to invest a little bit more time in this than I have. I'm, I really haven't done anything but skim it, to be honest. Well, I guess that's my question is, um, you know, these so content working group is set up specifically to spend time on questions like this, and I don't have these questions been run by them. Absolutely, uh, the last content working group we actually went through this model and kind of talked about how um, it would be included in this board update and does it look like the the general direction. Keep in mind, this is not the first version of it. We've we've gone through several versions, um, and also we've had. Uh, feedback not only from the content working group, which is you know obviously important from the content strategy standpoint, but also from a what does the migration mean to uh, stakeholders that, for instance, are groups maintainers or have been heavily involved in groups. Um, and yesterday, and then again today, we had uh, meetings with those stakeholders to walk them through this process and get their feedback as well. So it's um, while that feedback has not been incorporated yet, generally everybody who's seen it has been positive with the idea. Um, and I would agree that most people start getting into the, well, what does this look like specifically? Um, and that's where it gets really, uh, it becomes a challenge. We're still trying to figure out how best to share that so that we can get people involved in the specifics, um, but still actually put together a timeline for how to, how to roll out all these changes, because obviously that's a lot of issues to create uh, to do this significant of a shift. Right. No, I meant these these discussion questions, though. I mean, is there a recommendation from have, have you talked about these strategy questions with CWG and, and is there a recommendation that they've already made that we could consider? Right. Um, I don't know that we had the uh, discussion questions written up by the time we had the uh, DCWG meeting. These were, were uh, meant for the board, but I, I mean, so I, if I yes, could, I, I don't disagree with that. Yeah, I feel like I, I hear what you're saying, Tiffany, around um, uh, it does, um, I think you have raised that um, this discussion maybe happens in a different place, and that's, you know, in our shifting sands. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I just mean like, you know, to echo Jeff's point, like they're they're tasked with being more immersed in yeah. Drupal.org all the time than, than the board is. And so I think, you know, while we had, could, could, you know, I'm certain we could all come up with opinions on this, um, it's not really, we'd have to dig into it at a level that, that we don't usually go to in order to be able to thoughtfully answer. Right. So get in a discussion on this. I think what I hear you suggesting, which is not a model that we've really used in the past, but we could implement here is these kinds of things. Uh, we have these strategic conversations with the working groups that then basically are presenting them to the board with a recommendation for adoption, basically. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. I don't say yes for me. That would be helpful to me. But I think it's also, for all of us, I don't think it's necessarily that we're trying to, like, avoid the dirtiness of having to understand it. It's more just, I, I'm not sure it's well summarized. For me, if I could just maybe take another stab at, at more clearly articulating what, what my concern would be, I would rather see what would come to the board would be kind of from the working group via their vendor and, and Josh's team and everyone else, sort of like, these are the things we want to accomplish. If we could accomplish these, would Drupal.org be a better place, and would you be super happy that we're doing it? And and we're like, yes. And then they come back and they're like, okay, this is how we're going to do it. And yeah. you, you know what I mean? I, I I'm 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 instead I have like content types. I have a one pager that I think is too high level that doesn't actually say any of that stuff. And then I have a another thing that's I'm not sure what it is. Um, and it just feels like, okay, these three things together, I would have to wrap my head around to in order to say, yes, if all these things happened, I'd be super happy. Yeah. Okay. I hear what you're saying. I don't know what the solution is. I feel like this has been a huge uh, struggle in general for us, but both at the at every level of communication uh, around sharing broad ideas versus specific details. For example, I, I definitely think part of it gets better when we have a strategic framework to be able to basically, like, you know, 
even just visually show like this rolls up to this rolls up to this makes a happy face at the end over here right um when we get to mission and um i, I think that'll help i i do I do feel like there is a tension of, around not providing that detail because there is, it's one thing in, it's one thing to talk about implementing a feature. It's another thing to have implemented the feature and then deal with the experience of it, right? Um, and I feel like we get a lot of, um, a lot, uh, there's a lot of, yes, that's a good idea. And then the thing gets done and it's, like, you know, it's done all wrong somehow. Because there's a lot of there in between. There's a lot of meat in between that, right? So I'm, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not arguing about it. I'm, I'm just saying that's like a, I feel like there's lots of tensions here that we're, we're trying to work out around which information goes where at what level and how to communicate that and incorporate feedback in the right places all, all around. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's kind of more of a symptom and like the the issue that we had around the documentation working group not not being involved in the in the content strategy and the staff rolling out um, uh, guides which were m mostly about marketing but really also about documentation I feel like that kind of that what happened there is a bit of a symptom of of what you're discussing of what you're saying here is like what is the right level of information for us what's the right level of information for the content working group and where are the you know the communication lines about this really quite fundamental change. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think any of us individually are qualified to to really make make the call on this. We don't we don't have enough centralized vision about what this should be. Um, mm -hmm. You know that sense of a product owner for Drupal.org is is still one that we don't really we don't really have. It's the DA itself, is it? I don't know. Yeah. I, you know, I think that's why we're. Well, I mean, <laughs> if, if I could exactly. throw out, like, that's actually one of the topics that we're going to be talking about at the board retreat um, in DrupalCon LA is figuring out what is what is the acceptable level of ownership communication process. Like, what does that actually need to look like? Um, yeah. I, I felt like I was beginning to get answers in the first six months I was on the job. Um, I actually feel like that's become less solidified over time. So that's <laughs> definitely something, I mean, as a, I mean, as a CTO, that's a little bit disturbing. So I, I definitely need that feedback from you guys to know what you see my job as being, um, what you see the role of the team as being, what you see the role of the working groups as being, and then what is your own role in approving or final approval? Because uh, if we don't have that kind of st structure, if we don't have a process that we can repeat, then we'll 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 keep rebuilt reinventing. Yeah, I think. So. I think that's a good point. I think I think we're 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 having too much of a good thing, which is in the old days, you know, the board would be all over this, you know, these three documents, peeling through them, telling you what content types to use. And <laughs> now what we're saying is. Ugh, don't bother us with content types, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't know if this is a good problem or a bad problem. Uh, I think I was just trying to say, if you feel like you need something from us, maybe it's something in between this and that in terms of level of detail, yeah. right? That's I get. Maybe I should have just third tries a charm. How about something in between this and level of detail? Uh, and then and then we're helpful but not nitnoidy because I don't want to be nitnoidy. I don't want to tell you ah, that's not the book module. That's the blah blah blah. You know, I mean, I don't want to go there. And I also don't want to be like, you know, at the level of like, you know, sunshine and rainbows where it's like the purpose of Drupal that is to make the world a wonderful place from the board. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I I like to be somewhere helpful in between, which is like, hey, if you could solve this problem where like developers are leaving in droves because they hate the experience of these tools, boom, there you go. Like here, we've got five things to fix that problem. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. map I, map we, we want to be in the mapping problems to map our goals and problems to your implementation and then we want to trust you to implement. You know yeah. what I mean? And I do think that the prioritization process that we put in historically of, of, okay, so here's a whole bunch of possibility and here are the objectives that we can use that say these help reach this objective versus these don't. Um, and we implemented right. that with the software working group and the plan is to start implementing that with all working groups, not just the Drupal.org ones, but also documentation, 
also a technology working or technical working group, um, just to try to include enough voices that we can actually spend our time on the right priorities. Um, right. But then there's still going to be there. I mean, there will always be a, a, a bit of back and forth um, after that point. And 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 right. what level the board wants to be involved in that would be um, also that would be a great clarifying point to have brought back. So I, I, I'm sure Dries wants to wrap up. Uh, yep. But one more. <laughs> I was trying to inject myself. But um, I have some ideas as well, and um, you know, I can share them with you offline, Holly. Okay. Can I, can I quickly ask for two things on top of this, actually? Um, first of all, if we could get like a clear set of priorities for the board to approve, because we are going to run out of time and budget for, for implementing all of this stuff. So uh, I think the board needs to decide if like a, a new Drupal adopter or existing community member is going to be more important. Do this like really, really difficult uh, setting of priorities thing that probably nobody else can do. And the second thing, importantly, would be like who decides on what. The board clearly doesn't want to be involved in setting content types for the site. That, I think that, that much is clear. But I think it's really unclear on, on in the future who's going to decide on what level. So sort of, I think the board should say like what gets brought up to the board and, and what doesn't and who can actually deal with it. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think we have a lot of that. We're trying to engineer the discussion at the um, retreat in Los Angeles to address a bunch of those kinds of issues. Um, and, um, you know, getting that frame that Jeff is looking for uh, to parse the stuff it at at the right level is also something that we have been working on and we'll have a model to talk about in Los Angeles. Um, and then in the meantime, I, we just have to figure out, uh, Josh and I will just have to huddle about, you know, whether we feel like we can move forward with implementation here. So. Yeah, and, and I, I would not interpret anything that we've said as, as being, no, there's a problem. It's more just. Yeah. But, you, know, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. Like, we're, in we're in a better wrong, position. You know? We're in a better position when you guys feel like you can, you know, you can proactively endorse things that happen, right? So. Sure. I mean, just to be frank, you're going to have exactly the same problem when this goes out in the community. It's going to be way too much to, for them to digest. They're going to nitpick little stupid things that don't matter and lose sight of the bigger thing. You know what I mean? Like this is just the board rejecting this as a microcosm of a larger problem, which is like. We need to be communicating early and often when we're making humongous changes. Um, first, get people used to the idea that they're coming. Then show them early drafts of the work and why. And then show them this and then show them that. I mean, because you do that with the board pretty well. I feel like with DrupalCon, you know, we get an idea of, like, these are the kinds of places we're looking at. And then we get an idea of we've narrowed it down to these couple. And then we get an idea of this is what we're proposing and here's the budget. If we got all of that in one meeting, we would be like, what? Where'd this come from? Blah, blah, blah. You know? So we need to perfect that art of early and often communication with any big change we try and do, especially to the website, because there's so many different people who have such strong ownership in that thing. Yeah. Well, how do you, well, how do, you do it yeah, with well, core? Why do you like No, how do you do that in core? Oh. Sorry, I still didn't hear the question. How do you do that in core? So in core, everything is transparent from the moment someone gets an idea, right? Like the issue's there, and you can see the thought process that went through the whole entire chain, all the failed attempts people made at a solution, the different twists and turns it made, the arguments involved in getting to the solution, et cetera, et cetera. So we don't have the problem in core for the inner people because they know everything, or if they don't know, they can look it up. So that's the problem is like, I think, I think all of this reference material is really, really great to provide, but I think that high level summary the board is looking for that explains the whys and the what are we hoping to get out of this and this kind of stuff, the community is going to need that as well. And it's sort of like show your work like you would in math class. And then there's where you can like link off to the nice long presentation with all the details. But it's like without that and if you just present this finished baked cake to people, they're going to they're not going to react well. How do we blend that? Especially with if they feel sure. like. I recommend that we table this discussion because we can keep going. Mm, um, we can be better to regroup with a smaller group, 
uh, offline. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, I don't see this discussion being over in the next few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I would, I I would love to brainstorm with you guys on how to solve this problem. So please, let's have a conversation next week or whenever it's handy. And the big picture problem I see here, as opposed to the detail of exactly what we're going to do, is we're not talking about, in some ways we're not talking about a website, we're talking about a city or a planet. You know, it, in some way, it, this is being approached like it's, it's just any old website redevelopment with all the right bits and pieces that we're all familiar with as web professionals. But the, the impact on the people who live in the city is, you know, is the hard part. That's my thought. So, we have, we have some work to do on this, but, um, you know, Joshua and, and the rest of the team, not, don't feel discouraged. This is great uh, work. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I agree. Like, it, it's clear that there's a lot of you know, thought that went into this, and you guys have, have gone through, you know, multiple iterations and, and, and all of these things. I think we just need to, you know, look at it slightly differently, make it consumable slightly differently, and um, I'm pretty confident that this will all play out well. So, um, all right, is there any other topics or things that anyone wants to bring up for the open session? If not, I recommend that we move into the executive session. Let's do it. All right, thanks everybody. Cool. Thank you.